And folks, what I want you to do is I want you to get into your cars and I want you to drive around the circle at about 15 miles an hour. And they're off. Everyone's going to try and drive at the same speed, but driver behavior is not perfect. Some people go a little bit faster, some people go a bit slower, and the traffic will start to bunch up. As Eddie predicted, some of the drivers start to vary their speeds and the distance between the cars changes. They begin to bunch up and sure enough, a cluster of vehicles comes to a standstill. A phantom traffic jam has formed. When we speed up the footage, we can see this traffic jam starting to spread backwards around the circle. And once it starts, it just keeps going. So all it takes really then is a couple of people to break or something and that sets it all off. Sure, if there are enough cars on the road, something very minor can get magnified into a, into a traffic jam. A computer simulation shows this even more clearly. When the stationary traffic starts moving again, the jam doesn't disappear. Instead, it travels like a shockwave back along the motorway. Soon, more and more vehicles get caught up and grind to a halt for no obvious reason it is to make a traffic jam, but what do we do to prevent them? Well, the first thing is just keep your distance. If you see a space open up in front of you, don't rush to fill it. That's the first thing. Second thing, avoid changing lane too much. So we've all had it when we're sitting there in a traffic jam, the other lane seems to be going faster. But if you change lane, you probably just make the traffic flow worse. So try to stay in the same lane. And a third way that's helping already is the introduction of variable speed limits on roads prone to congestion. A 50 miles per hour limit has been found to lead to a faster average journey time than 70 miles per hour because it smooths the traffic and tends to reduce the stop and go waves. For the first time, Japanese researchers have conducted a real life experiment that shows how some traffic jams appear for no apparent reason. They placed 22 vehicles on a single track and asked the drivers to cruise round at a constant speed of 30 kilometers an hour. At first, traffic moved smoothly, but soon the distance between cars started to vary and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track. So the jam spread backwards around the track like a shock wave at a rate of about 20 kilometers an hour. Real life jams move backwards at about the same speed. I live in the Seattle area and commute to work. And in the mid-1990s, I accidentally discovered how to wipe out a certain kind of traffic jam. I was bored, and this was on 520 going west towards the bridges, where there's always a whole bunch of stop-and-go driving. And I was trying to avoid hitting the brakes by driving at the average speed. So drive slow so a big open spot opens up. And then um, just before I arrive at the stopped wave of cars, they all take off. And if I got it just right, I'd never have to hit the brakes at all. And one evening, I looked in the rearview mirror and could see all the headlights. And I could see the stop-and-go waves of clots of cars behind me. But in my lane, they were totally uniform, which I guess is pretty obvious in hindsight that I was eating traffic waves. Everybody behind me has no reason to be doing the stop-and-go driving. So one single car for miles and miles was wiping out all of the stop and go driving in a single lane. But I kept trying to do that whenever there was any kind of stop and go wave by having a big empty space ahead of my car. And then accidentally discovered another kind of traffic jam that would break up ahead of me sometimes. Now of course it didn't always work, but if you have a big empty space and there's a jammed merge zone ahead of you, the jam is often kept alive by a solid row of cars in the through lane who won't let anybody in. They pack themselves together. And then there's cheaters who run down to the end and force their way in. And nobody can really stop them. They'll just wait until they can get in between two people. So the traffic jam is really caused by a fight. There might be just a tiny percentage of cheaters going down to the end and forcing their way in. But if I let them in early, they'll merge ahead of me and then they're not racing down to the end to get in line and do the big fight. And then there's no reason for the traffic jam, and everybody in the through lane just takes off. So I saw that happen a couple of times and realized single drivers can have huge effects if they behave differently, if you let people ahead of you. But why close up gaps in the first place? Well, sometimes it's to, to block out the cheaters, but more often... It's